Ah yes, plants, the great green of the earth, the great foliage of our planet, coming in many colors, shapes, and forms, and there's no denying its versatility, whether those reasons be recreational, therapeutic, or even medicinal. But what truly makes things change colors? Like, what really makes plants change every type of color that we see and can be and can be? It's a very interesting thought. And some people will do research, and some other people will do bro science. One of the most common myths of bro science is that you can pour soda of a certain color on your plant in order to get it to turn that soda's way. And to be honest, this is just strictly a bro science all the way from the left guy all the way to the right guy. These are facts that are always proved to be fake. Once they're thoroughly reviewed under the right eye and professional, or at least the right person of interest who can research that, turning the mere fact of your bro science into the fake news that it's always has been. Now I will take you on a journey where I will tell you what makes these plants turn different colors and why they turn different colors and how they turn different colors. And yes, they will be very easy and it will not require you to pour any type of soda, orange juice, or Kool-Aid. So let's go. The magical chemical known for changing plants and their colors is known as anthocyanin. Anthocyanin is a very important chemical and it's a part of a flavonoid family of chemicals. Anthocyanin is a very important chemical because without the genetic makeup of this specific chemical, plants wouldn't turn the beautiful Alice in Wonderland colors that we know them of today. And also, it's a very diverse family. And when I say diverse, imagine all of us literally blood related, that diverse. To help you get a better picture of how plants do what they do, imagine how fall happens. Now, anthocyanin kicks in at that point when it gets very cold. And when it gets very cold to a certain point, it changes, the chlorophyll stops working. And then magically, the anthocyanin kicks in. And believe it or not, this chemical is in 95% of every fruit and vegetable in the world, 95%. I know some of you may say, hey, but don't certain things share colors like a yellow pepper? And don't yellow peppers share that same color with bananas? Mm, you're a smart viewer indeed. Yes, they do. And I bet you're going to go a step further and tell me that they also share the same color as pineapples, right? Of course they do. But that's because they have that genetic makeup. That's why you see this flower like this, right? And that's why you see a rose the way it is, but you'll never see the irreversible. You will never see a dandelion looking like a rose and vice versa because it is not in its genetic makeup. There are different versions of roses. Yes, I understand this. That is only because it's in that plant's genetic makeup. Let me explain. Anthocyanin is like DNA and it has a certain genetic makeup and only that certain genetic makeup can be a certain way. Now, that's not widely spread, which means that one plant will definitely not look like the other, which means that there are common colors, there are uncommon colors, and there are so various common colors. You understand that, right? Cool. Now, any plant living in a harsh environment can easily get stressed out, and your plant will get stressed out, it will get sick, and your plant will eventually die. Not in the sense that it'll cough on you, but your plant can get sick like you do, and it can die easier than you can because it lives off of simpler cells. Wait, 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 before you leave a nasty comment, let me explain. In recent years, scientists have turned to flavonoids to study due to the fact that they have such potent benefits towards health. According to LPI, anthocyanin is a flavonoid. A flavonoid is a phytonutrient. A phytonutrient is a chemical found in natural plants that can benefit humanity when using them towards preventing illnesses and diseases. A common example of these would be aloe vera, how it treats the skin, blueberries, how they keep the brain from degeneration, and there's no doubt there's a lot more. Fun fact, did you know that an orange is the only fruit in the world that is named after its actual color as there is no blueberry color in the world? I've never colored with a blueberry crayon, have you? All right, moving on. Back to LPI, let me introduce you to the new frontiers of vitamin C and health. These guys sound like elite Pokemon trainers. They go on further to explain that flavonoids are powerful antioxidants and anti-inflammatory and very beneficial to the immune system and give it multiple benefits. 
Diets and food rich in containing flavonoids are associated with preventing cancer, neurodegeneration, and cardiovascular disease. Often, man has answers, and his name is Luis Prim Kumar, a professor at SIU School of Medicine and author of the book that is literally titled Fascinating Facts About Phytonutrients and Spices in Healthy Food, written in 2014. In this book, he talk about the flavonoids and the anthocyanins and how they're very helpful. And unfortunately, smoking any colorful plant will not gain you any of those health benefits due to the fact that there's a bunch of things that goes on in smoke that you really don't know. And those are called chemical reactions, but that's okay. As one smoke mixes with the other, I will gladly explain to you what you do and do not know. In order for you to gain those health benefits that we talked about and so many much more, we have to do deep research. When I say deep research, let's take this book for example. Get it open, thank you. Now that you have the book open and now that your brain is focused, let's look into exactly what happens when heat and precious chemicals get together because that's the only way we're gonna find out, right? Right. Naturally, when you're cooking something and you have precious qualities and chemicals inside that something you're cooking, no matter what it is, as soon as it touches heat, it starts to depreciate, so to speak. So if you had 60% of vitamin C inside of a very well-balanced piece of meat or fruit, and then you put it through the heating process, you're going to burn off at least 30 to 40% of the nutrients, sometimes even 60% due to the fact that most foods are cooked in high heat. And high heat destroys a lot of very precious chemical properties, especially if you're cooking for recreational purposes, you know, i.e. cannabis, or you're just cooking just to cook normal food it still breaks down those precious qualities that you want to see on the other side. Though you may have a beautiful meal, you will not have those beautiful benefits. Destroying those chemicals can miss out on major health benefits. Now, what are those major health benefits that you may ask? Oh, I don't know. Antioxidant properties, antimicrobial properties, anti-inflammatory properties, protecting your heart and liver, improving and maintaining vision, neurological health, and preventing obesity and diabetes. Scientist, without a doubt, knows that this floods the body head to toe, fixing almost any irreparable part of you, or at least maintaining it until you can get further treatment and our assistance. And not too many foods or chemicals simply do that. You either do one thing or the other. And it's very rare that we find a chemical that can keep us in a stasis, like a patient of sorts. We're not dead, though we're not entirely healthy. And we're not sick, but we're somewhere in the middle to be diagnosed. Now, cooking at a very high heat, as I said, destroys the food. Look at what this man is doing. Oh my God, you're just eating water and fiber. If you wanna get an idea about what's happening to the chemical right now, imagine smoking a cigarette with the cigarette being the chemical and the cooking fire being the flame that turns the cigarette to ash. This is going to turn any food that you're cooking into basically nutritional garbage. I'm sure the food may be of high quality, whatever you're stirring up in the pot, whip it and whip it good. And then for one moment, you have to think, at what cost did you whip it when you whipped all the meaning out of cooking? Now, thankfully, you know me, and I'm going to teach you how to cook things at a low heat. You see how it's just blue fire, very low heat. And when you cook things at low heat, things get done correctly, though it may take some time. Patience is a good thing, and patience builds character. Patience is a virtue. And as you wait, you will be rewarded with not only soft, chewy, chocolatey goodness, you will be rewarded with every benefit you put in those, especially if those are special cookies. Wink, wink. Pull up the graph, please. Now, the graph shows you that no matter what you cook in high heat, it's going to fluctuate and then it's going to always end up to zero because you're using the temperature of Satan to make something so beautiful and delicious like this. The less heat you use, the more you maintain all the benefits. That's why sushi is so good. And I really don't eat sushi, but even some oils have been used that have been extracted from plants in order to show that there is way more than one way for you to reap these benefits. And it could be in oils, mainly CBD oils since they have a healing factor. And there's few oils that have a healing factor like that. Now this may upset you. And when I say this may upset you, look at your face. Yeah, you're very upset, understand. But look, hold up, if you are, I have a solution to your problems. Now, while you sit there and stress that you don't have access to all this perp and that rich people do and other people who garden does, and you're sitting there, damn, how do I get the benefits that I'm dying of and so on and so forth. I got you and look as happy as me as she does and understand, yeah, girl, get it. I mean, y'all trying to come over tonight or what? I mean, um, back to the research. Now, whilst this isn't rocket science, it's still some type of science involved, but not much. 
but just enough for you to learn something new and to become a better you. Then soon, you can eat food that was either fed purple plants or that has purple plant properties. Now I know why they finish this food and why you sit there on your phone. Well, how do I even get a purple plant to begin with? Like, seriously, and I'm going to tell you, it's very simple. Even though each plant contains its own genetic makeup to not be purple, I'm going to tell you how it's very simple for you to play with the genetics in your plant to be purple. Now, you don't have to be a scientist to do this, despite how it may sound. Now, on with the playing. Now, when I sneak you this little secret, I know you're going to go tell the nearest person you know, so might as well tell you, right? Now, each plant only contains a certain color in it due to the fact that the pH level inside that plant is either high, neutral, or low. And I will explain to you all three. As one may know that each plant needs a certain type of environment with the ideal conditions in order for it to thrive. The more intricate the plant, the more ideal those conditions are. And for people who like plants and want those, it's very frustrating to know you can't have what you want only because it's so damn sensitive by sunlight, heat, cold, etc. But when you have everything you need from temperature to nutrients to daylight, moonlight, this plant or any plant would be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen growing in front of you. Conditions must be picture perfect. The more intricate that plant is, if you are growing a rose, it needs nothing but peace and quiet in order to grow. Then again, if it is too hot, your plant will die. If it is too cold, your plant will die. Being in the cold, plants can only survive a mere 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius for my fellow nerds out there. Now, how to turn your plant purple is very simple. The cold will actually work, but you have to be very smart about how you do it. Cold temperatures break down chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the chemical that literally make all plants green. Got it? Get it? Good. Once chlorophyll stops working, it literally goes and tells anthocyanin, hey, why don't you get your ass up and start to work? Anthocyanin literally comes in when chlorophyll stops working and starts changing the genetic structure, turning that green plant, those beautiful, magical Alice in Wonderland colors that you want so very badly. But alas, remember, this can only happen if your plant has the genetic makeup to become that purple plant. Most plants can become a various amount of colors before they even turn purple, just to let you know, because purple is not really that hard to achieve, especially on the pH scale. I'm gonna tell you how. And we've already been over why. Now keep in mind, anthocyanin is responsible for turning this onion purple, but still maintaining to be white as well, as well as the carrots originally being purple. To give you an example, you can see how these carrots are still orange, but at the very top, they still show that deep, slight purple that it's always has been and always will be in the genetic makeup. All right, that's all well and good. But now it's brainstorming time. I think it's time to give you some real ideas on how you can really do this. Provided you have peak conditioning in your plant, provided you have ideal nutritioning, provided you have an ideal ecosystem for it to thrive in. With all these things nice and well and good, like the yin and yang symbol, we're gonna to come to peace and we're going to come to the pH balance. High levels of pH will make your plants blue. Neutral pH make your plants purple in hue and then acidic pH turns your plants red. These are the colors that you need to understand. Now relax, you don't have to be a scientist to go to the market and get a pH indicator to stick in the soil of your plant and find out. Otherwise, you can do everything wrong pouring soda in it and end up killing your plant. As I mentioned before, whether it's cannabis or not, this is not your desired outcome. To debunk common myths, you have to understand that no amount of soda, no amount of depriving your plant will make it give you the best desired effects. The best way to get the best out of your plant is to let your plant do what it does at maximum efficiency. Whether it's raining, whether it's storming, whether it's pouring, your plant knows how to behave. Now it's easy for you to go to your local retailer of wherever the hell you are, there's a super mall everywhere in the world, they made it possible, and you can find the necessary ingredients to tinker with the pH levels of your plant. If you want another way to do that, you can get a mother and father plant and you can easily clone them so the genetics in that clone have the direct genetics from the mother and father plant. And it's really simple, but you gotta be very careful because if you do this by having the father plant as the variable, it may not share that genetic system, which means that green can easily be passed on and that purple can be skipped like in genes. As you reversing this role, having the mother plant as the primary plant with the gene of the perp and you having everything else green with the father, 
you will still have a definite purple in every single clone because the mother had it. If you do it the reverse way as I explained first, then you will get the undesired effect with every other plant containing the purple, as opposed to the second effect I told you where every plant will contain that purple strain. And like I said, it's like a dad who's sharing his genes. Sometimes it may or may not be passed to all the kids for they may look differently. This applies to plants as well. And hopefully you've learned something today and I've taught you well about not only the health effects of these colorful plants, but how you can obtain them for yourself and your family. And I'll show you a few purple plants just so you don't feel shortchanged. I spoke enough, so I'll let you enjoy these few plants while I sit here and plan the next video for you. This is really right now, and thanks for watching. Baby girl, I'm on the sea. Baby girl, I'm on the sea. Baby girl, can't get to her. Baby girl, she on my phone. But I will be thinking of me. Baby, I will be thinking of me. Baby, you always in my head. Baby girl, you in my dome. Like you on my fantasy. Like you on my fantasy. When I hope you hear this song, you can play it all night long. Girl, I hope you think of me. Girl, I hope you think of me. Girl, I hope you think of me. Think of me. Think of me. Think of me. Think of me.